Hi, my name is Joe Norman, and I'm a Partner Solutions Architect at AWS. In this video, I'm going to show you how to transfer data stored in S3 to Zendesk using Amazon AppFlow. Amazon AppFlow allows you to create bidirectional data flows between AWS services and SaaS applications without the need for code. So the first thing you see here is my data file that I'm going to eventually transfer to Zendesk. So this is a CSV file I'm just displaying it in Excel. You can display it in a text, text editor or anything. The only mandatory field that Zendesk needs to create a user, which is the type of object I'm going to create in this demo, uh, is the name field. All the rest can be basically whatever your data source has. Um, it's transferred over and we'll be able to map those to different Zendesk fields and I'll show you how to do that in AppFlow shortly. So one thing I want to show you is that these users don't exist yet in Zendesk. So the, win the browser window here is my Zendesk dashboard. Uh, I've got people pulled up. I've got these six users who are all just test users, all jnormanet, at, jnormanet. At. Um, don't match up with these 10 users that I'm going to add here. So this CSV file needs to first be stored in Amazon S3. So I've got a bucket here named AppFlow Zendesk Norman, and I stored it in the video path. So there it is, already uploaded. I've also got this errors path here, and I'll show you that, what that does shortly. So flipping over to Amazon AppFlow, let's go ahead and create the new flow. So the first page of the flow is some metadata. So I'm going to make a name here, Zendesk Users RJ Demos. It could be anything you want. RJ Demos is my fake company name. Uh, you can make, you can write anything you want in the description as well. It doesn't affect anything. On this data encryption field, you can use AWS KMS and choose one of your customer master keys if you have one to encrypt the data, or you can just let the service take care of it, which is what I'm gonna do. And you can also add some tags here. So let's say you have multiple companies using your AWS account, multiple companies under an umbrella, for example. It's an AWS account, just as an example. Um, create as many tags as you want, anything you want, whatever your company uses, and those are optional. All right, so here's where things get interesting. So we've got our source, which we know is S3. And we're gonna choose that bucket, which was AppFlow's index Norman, if you remember. And our prefix, which was video, because I'm making a video. Now we need our destination. So when you choose the source, we're gonna get different destination options. S3 gives us these destinations, and I'm gonna choose Zendesk. And now I need to create a connection. And that is an OAuth connection. So this part is fun. We're going to open up a Zendesk window to create an OAuth client in Zendesk. I'm going to put these windows side by side here. And I can't use a keyboard shortcut because I'm using a virtual desktop. Well, maybe I can. I haven't tried it. Anyway, I'm going to add an OAuth client. So the left side here is the Zendesk dashboard. The right side is AppFlow in the AWS Management Console. I'm going to show you where the fields go. So first is client name on the Zendesk site. Let's start everything on the left side here, the Zendesk side. So client name can be anything you want. So let's call it um, Zendesk, well, we know it's Zendesk. AppFlow demo video. Description, I'm not gonna put one in, that's optional. Company, also optional. Logo, I'm not gonna do logo because then you'll see all my pictures on my computer. All right, unique identifier. This is where you actually need to start copying things over. So that's gonna match up with your client ID. I'll just use the one it pre-filled, which is based on my on my name that I put up there. And then I'll do RJ Demos, just to make it a little more unique. So I'm gonna copy that unique identifier field over to client ID on the AWS side. Redirect URL comes from right here in the AWS, in the URL, the uh, address bar, can't think. So you copy this part from the address bar right up to the slash after app flow, including the HTTPS, paste it there in Zendesk, and add OAuth to the end of it. And then when you save, you're gonna need to copy the client secret. Zendesk side is gonna give you a client secret, so you're gonna get one chance to copy that. So it's gonna warn you. And there's the secret. You can put a nice handy copy button there and you paste it there. And don't worry, I will be deleting this client afterwards so you won't be able to hack me with that. So one last thing you need on the AWS side is this account. It's your Zendesk subdomain. So it's everything between the slashes, the double slash for HTTPS 
and before Zendesk. So mine is D3V hyphen RJ demos. It's a Zendesk sponsored account. And then last box on the AWS side is a connection name, which you can be anything you want. So we'll call it Zendesk demo. And I'm gonna save on Zendesk side to make sure that's working. No, it doesn't like my connection name. So I guess it doesn't like spaces. Learn something new. All right, so now you're gonna get um, to either approve or deny the OAuth scope. So we read and write all user data in your Zendesk account. I'm gonna allow that. And that's done. I'm gonna remax out this screen, this window. All right, so now that we've created that connection, that stays there so we can reuse it next time we make a flow. You don't need to go through that step every time now that I've connected to Zendesk. I'm gonna do users because my data matched up better with users. You can also do tickets if you've got ticket type data when connected to Zendesk. All right, so if data can't be transferred, you this this field's optional. You can you can choose to put it to a place or you can choose to skip it. So that's what I made that errors bucket for, or that errors path. So I'm gonna just add that there. In case there's any problem with the data, um, that'll give you an output there. So now you can you specify your flow trigger. So run on demand just means when you click a run button at the very end of this, your your data will will pull from S3 and write to Zendesk, and only when you press run. You can also have the option. You also have the option of doing schedules. So you can do up to every minute. Um, it can get as granular as every one minute. Um, set different times. It's kind of like setting a, setting up a recurring meeting in Outlook. Um, your times here, so you've got hours and minutes. Um, that is based on your browser local time, so in 24 hour format. So it's 1.15 a.m. for me, which would be 0115, and that'll translate it behind the scenes so you don't have to worry about translating time zones. And you can set a start date and an optional end date, so I want to start today at 2 a.m. You can do that. And the only option here you have is to do an incremental transfer, which is, uh, which means it will transfer data that it hasn't. So, um, in the case of an S, in the case of an S3 bucket, um, what that means is if a new file shows up in that S3 bucket, it will transfer new files only that show up and not files that have already been transferred CSV files. So, that one that I showed you will be transferred once. Next time the schedule, the first time the schedule runs, it'll transfer that file I showed you. If I add a new file any time between now and then, it'll transfer the data in the new file or files, but it will not transfer the original that, that it transferred. So it's only transferring new files that it, that didn't exist previously each time it runs. But in this case, make things simple for the demo, I'm gonna run on demand. All right, now we're gonna do the mapping. So at the top of here, top here, um, you have the, the ability to upload a CSV file with the fields map, but I'm gonna show you how to do it manually. Um, you have three choices. So you can insert new records, which will take all your all your fields from that CSV file and make new users out of them in Zendesk. It could update existing records, so it won't make new ones, but it will just update any that it finds existing. Or it could do the one that we're gonna do, which is a combination of the two, which the word upsert, which may or may not be a real word. I haven't looked it up. Um, but it's a combination of update and insert. So if it doesn't find a user for each of these 10 users, it will add them. And if it does find them for any or all of them, it will update. So if, if Carlos Salazar already exists and one of these fields is different, it will update that field that's different. Um, if Diego Ramirez does not exist, it will add Diego Ramirez, get the idea. All right, so we've got a map S3 on the left with Zendesk on the right. To do an upsert, um, so we need to we basically need a unique identifier to match between the two. In my case, email is going to be unique on both sides, not really ever going to change for users. So I'm going to map those, and that'll kind of be my primary key for my upserts. And if it finds, and that means if it finds a match on both sides of those, it's going to treat it as an existing record and update rather than making a new one. All right, now we do the rest of the mapping. So I'm going to map all fields here. Left side is S3 and the right side is Zendesk. They happen to match in this case because I made them match in my CSV file. Um, in in many cases, they won't match. So it's your job to decide how fields match from source to destination. So this is gonna be pretty easy since the names match here. So name matches to name, external ID matches to external ID, email matches to email. 
On the Zendesk side, you can read the Zendesk API docs. Oh, I don't need email because I use that as my upsert mapping. So phone matches the phone. And you saw there I could I can delete rows that I don't want to map want to map, and that means it won't. Except in the case of email since I used it before. Um, but if I wanted to delete role role, for example, it will not add We'll see that role data in the CSV, but it will not add it to Zendesk if I delete it. But I'm not gonna do that. And time zone should match with time zone. Map selected fields. All right, so those are all mapped. That's the hard parts over. You have the option to add a validation. So this is the ability to get rid of bad data basically. So let's say I have um, any rows where there's no email address. I can terminate the entire flow or I can ignore it, ignore the record and just move on to the rest of the records. That's what I'm going to do in this case. Um, so you can basically take any field and check a value and, and choose, to, the, choose to decide that um, that record's bad because of it and either stop the whole thing because something's really wrong or ignore the record only, which is what I'm going to do here. Again, validations are optional. Filters aren't going to work here with S3 to Zendesk. Uh, if you did something like Salesforce to Zendesk, you'd see filters. That's kind of the ability, it's kind of what it sounds like. It's a filter, it's the ability to um, choose which data you're gonna include and exclude. It's kind of different from the idea of pulling out individual records that are bad data. It's say, say you had a date field and you want only only records to be included if their date field is after a certain date. So you could set, you could filter based on that. But there's no ability to do that with S3 to Zendesk. So we will skip that. All right, this is just a page to check through everything and review it before you do it. I'm going to create the flow, and that's that. And then you just run it anytime you want. And once you run it, I'll just run it now. Kind of need to do that. <laughs> and then you can check your people in Zendesk after it runs. Let's see if it's run. And there we go, we've got 16 users. So we've got the 10 users added now. Look at Carlos Salazar. Yep, they're all there. All right, so that's that. Thank you very much for joining.